The rain continued to fall heavily, cascading down in sheets and saturating the muddy ground and the dark, glistening wet figures that trampled through the thick mire. It seemed that it had been raining for a lifetime, tirelessly pouring from the heavens with a rhythmic drumbeat from the heavy droplets that splashed against every surface. The two soldiers stood at the high wall, staring out into the dark wasteland, squinting through the squalls that blew in from them at all directions, waterlogging their clothing and soaking through their bodies. Pushing back his hood, hearing the material crinkle in his hands and feeling the biting cold air and rain sweep across his bare skin, the larger of the two threw his head back, blinking up at the night sky as the cold water streamed across his face and down his neck in rivulets. He watched the dense clouds as they drifted by above him, billowing in their multiple shades of gray. You have to love this country, he said loudly, in an attempt to be heard by the man standing next to him over the loud pitter-patter of the downpour. He stuck out his tongue and savored the icy water that splashed into his throat. Even in the summer, it's as wet as a Tom Jones's groupie's knickers. Does Tom Jones do many gigs these days? I saw an old CD of him being used to scrape some mildew from the back of a stove in the kitchen the other day. Does that count? I suppose it will have to do. Doesn't matter anyway, he said, throwing his hood back over his head and looking out into the inky blackness. You see anything out there? Nothing, but I can still smell them, the smaller man sighed. Far to the right, a sudden series of flashes erupted from one of the heavy machine gun positions stationed along the top of the wall, momentarily illuminating the long barrel and the men who sat behind it. A second later, the distant low rumble of the discharging rounds reached their ears. They watched as the bright red tracer bullets shot out from the parapet and glided gracefully through the air. Run, Chris, she urged, her voice laden with fear. You need to run! Behind her, she could hear the panic-filled gasps of her brother. He whimpered and snorted as he ran. Tears streamed down his face and mixed with the thick strands of mucus that endlessly flowed from his nose as he stumbled and cried his way along the dusty track behind her. They had been running for what seemed an eternity, but in reality it had only been a few minutes and his large body was struggling to maintain the pace. His ribcage felt as if it was being slowly crushed, and no matter how hard he sucked in the air, he could barely breathe. The pain in his chest was almost too much to endure. His straining heart threatened to explode from the stress of having to pump so much oxygenated blood around such a large and unhealthy circulatory system through clogged arteries. I can't, he wailed pathetically. Oh, too fat! She was well aware of that fact, and her brother's inability to look after himself had been the subject of great annoyance to her for many years. Now, with their lives depending on their capability of being able to move at rapid speeds when necessary, his lifetime of self-abuse and overindulgence was proving to be a threat to their continued survival. Behind them, the noise of their pursuers was growing. There must have been hundreds of them by now, as their moans and cries of excitement attracted more from the surrounding area. She needed to find somewhere for them to hide, but they were miles from anywhere. The only building that they had seen in the region was an old country pub and that is where they had run into trouble. Christopher's incessant need for food had led him to stumble clumsily into the tavern before his sister had been given the chance to have a look around. From the outside, the place had looked empty and quiet, and nothing stirred in the tranquil woods and lanes that surrounded the building. With the twitters of the birds in the trees and the lazy buzzing of the insects in the air, the immediate vicinity had seemed peaceful, and he had been lulled into a false sense of security as his insatiable appetite drove him. The carnage was on a scale that she had never seen before, even when compared to countries such as Iraq or Afghanistan, where she had served and seen the massive bombing campaigns that had been conducted to flush out the insurgency. Even in those war-torn countries, she had never witnessed such destruction. Where proud and elegant buildings had once stood alongside sprawling financial districts and shopping arcades, Nothing but charred rubble and twisted steel framework remained, appearing like the colossal skeletons of ancient beasts. Huge craters surrounded by piles of debris and mangled human bodies exposed the impact points of the thousands of tons of ordnance that had been dropped upon the city. The ground beneath the helicopter was colorless, a collage of grays and blacks with no signs of life. As the aircraft passed slowly over the ruins, Melanie imagined that the worst-hit cities of Europe during the bombing missions of the Second World War 
would have appeared similar to what she was now seeing below them. For a vast area, there was nothing left standing. Even the dead seemed to have fled from the vicinity. The helicopter, a French-designed SA-342, also known as a gazelle, was a much smaller aircraft from the huge Chinooks that Melanie had become accustomed to flying. Compared to its large, heavy twin rotor counterpart, the gazelle was exactly as its name suggested. It was fast and extremely maneuverable, even in small spaces. It was agile, and its controls reacted instantly to the lightest touch. For the pilots who flew them, they were almost like toys after becoming used to giant CH-47s. The high-pitched scream of the gazelle's single turbine was distinctly different from the heavy thudding of the Chinooks and seemed to be in perfect tune with its size and capabilities. The appearance of the gazelle had gained it the nickname Chicken Leg amongst British soldiers, but that did not detract from the value and appreciation they felt towards such aircraft. It was quick and capable of twists.